Hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, today's uh, video is all about um, carrying off where I left off in the last video, which was putting the uh, poly bushes in the lower wishbones on the rear suspension. This episode is really about putting in the new CV joints um, instead of the old uh, rubber donut drive shafts. In the last video, I asked why, if anybody knew why the, there were these sort of half bolts screws that were used to hold these top uh, mounts in on the struts. Um, I couldn't see any sort of obvious reason for it. There seems to be an awful lot of clearance here. Um, anyway, uh, the consensus of opinion seems to be, some of the comments I got, is that uh, on um, earlier lands, uh, maybe babier lands, this mount is much closer to the, uh, the top of the spring um, retainer cap here. And that's why they had reduced heads. I'm not 100% convinced, but that may be the case. Um, also, there's a, a question people have asked about um, or suggested there may be a ride height issue that the um, these uh, loco uh, con mounts you can get now are different than the original ones. Well, I've checked my by being a bit um, a bit wider than um, than the original ones, but I've got one of my old ones off, and you can see they're not actually that much difference. This is probably um, a bit narrower between here and here, but in the comments they were talking, people were talking about it being sort of 13 mil. Um, so I think it's you know probably um, this one obviously suits this car, and maybe it's the earlier lands that have got a problem. Anyway, when I've gone to install the struts, um, I've had real problems in getting the um, uh, this bolt into the back or the in inboard side of the mount. There's just literally no access. Um, as you can see here, the um, it's it's fouled by the the bodywork of the car and also the the the, the, the springs. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to try and use a um, a cap head um, on the inboard side, which you know I think looks okay. There's there's a reasonable gap between there and then. So even if this did move back up there with the weight of the car and maybe a big bump. Um, I think there's probably enough resilience in this rubber to uh, sort of take that out and it's not going to touch the head. I'm going to use cap heads because I can get a, um, a ball-headed uh, Allen key in those and that, you know when this is in the car and moved to one side I can actually do it up whereas there's no room to put a spanner, even a crow's foot spanner or anything like that on the on the back there. Um, so I think that's the best chance of actually getting them done up. The only other alternative would be to, um, I suppose, compress up the spring um, and then fit the mount separately to the strut, but I don't really want to do that because uh, there's all sorts of problems because I've got, I've changed the, um, because I've changed the, the dampers to Spax dampers. Um, there's no real way of, um, getting hold of that nut when I'm putting that, doing that nut up when it's actually in the car and stopping the, the shaft turning. I'd have to make up a special tool because this is deep down inside the depth of the car. What I will do when it's on the car, um, I'll, I'll keep an eye on um, I'll keep an eye on that and see whether it's, it's any evidence of it touching. Um, but I think that would be, it's very doubtful. Anyway, if anybody's got any other views on it, please let me know in the comments. I'll be interested to hear what other people think. And then on the outboard side, because it's so hard to do up these, you because there's no, um, you can hardly get on the on the flanges of the of the nut. And as you can see, this one's all chewed up, and that's just me getting it to, getting it off. Um, I'm going to just put an ordinary an ordinary bolt in or screw in this side or the other side. Well, there you can see the the back bolt up behind see how it's fouled by all the bodywork and I've got to move this strut out of the way even for you to be able to see it so to actually get a spanner on a nut or the bolt head there is almost impossible whereas with the cap head I can put a ball in the uh, um, allen key in there and get it out um, and then on this side I was going to put a standard bolt back in
right, that's it done up tight. Well, I've got these uh, CV joint uh, drive shafts to put on. Um, these have a way around. I think this end, which I've got slightly shorter studs on them, is the diff side. It's got diff written on it. And then obviously this is the, uh, the hub side. One of the things I've got to watch out for is I think you're not supposed to let these go onto full droop. Well, certainly in um, baby lands, I don't know about in plus twos. Plus twos have got longer shafts, so it's, the angles are less acute. So anyway, I'm going to work on the side of caution and not uh, not let this go into full droop or install it. Just going to run a reamer through here, just to clean the holes out. It's a bit corroded. Well, I've put this strap around the chassis leg here to support the uh, drive shaft when it's in, so I don't want it to overextend. Uh, I think the risk is you damage the, uh, the, the rubber boots. Well, let's give this a go. Feel that the threads are starting to go engage with the uh, prongs on the uh, diff output shaft. So let me just give this a bit better. I'm going to tap this very hard, you can feel it going in. It doesn't like, take much misalignment. On. Well, here's the next issue. Um, I temporarily put the wishbone onto the up, onto the hub, and as you can see, um, there isn't going to be enough clearance. There's not enough push back on the CV joints to. Uh, to get the bolts to engage and um, I've also got to get the disc on here as well um, if I try and jack it up um, all it does is this, this just moves out this way and I can't push it back in so I think what I'm going to have to do is compress the spring a bit um, and then see if I can um, get a bit more movement there all right well this is turning into a bit of a nightmare I've had to uh, I've had to put the jack under the hair. I've had to put a strap around here to um, hold the, uh, the jack from moving backwards towards me. Um, oh, and I, I did have a strap around the wishbone and then around the, uh, the hub, but that just that didn't work at all. That, um, I couldn't then get the disc on. So uh, the disc is now sort of roughly in place, right side of the um, splines. Um, so now I'm going to give it a go with jacking it up with it, the jack tied to the car and um, see where that works. <laughs> Wish me luck.
Well, I've done much messing around, and particularly pokery, it has actually now gone on. Um, I've got the bolts done up, they're not tight enough yet, but I'll tighten those up. But look how many spring compressors I had to put on, what a mess that is now. But the spring's come out of its seat, so I need to uh, reposition that. So I had to spend a lot of time jacking up, moving it forward, moving the jack forward this way jacking up a bit more and eventually it sort of went in enough so I could get the uh, the disc on and the nuts onto the threads of the bolts and those th those nuts are very net on the on the hub in places so uh, anyway that's that done well that's the rear suspension all back together um, I've done the other side um, that's it for today Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and like. Uh, big thank you to all those that uh, bought me a coffee. It's really much appreciated and I'll catch you next time.